For the first time, a great white shark has been tracked in the waters between New York and Connecticut. The nearly 10 foot long shark named Cabot was detected in a Long Island Sound on Monday. OSEARCH, it's an organization dedicated to ocean data collection, has been electronically tracking Cabot. It's actually the same shark that was tracked a few days ago near North Carolina and off of Nova Scotia last year. I want to bring in Jeff Corwin. He's a biologist and a wildlife conservationist. He joins us now from Cape Cod, Massachusetts. So Jeff, I'm curious about this particular shark off of Long Island Sound. Is this really uncommon? Well, decades ago, it would have been incredibly uncommon. But as these incredible aquatic species begins to recover and their home ranges extend, these encounters are becoming a lot more common. So it's thrilling. For some, it may be terrifying. But this is now a part of the North American aquatic scape. We're seeing some video of, of what I believe is, is the, the tracking of, of these sharks. How does an organization like OSEARCH track and keep tabs on these sharks? That's a great question. So it's basically classic sweat, blood, and tans, uh, sweat, blood, and tears field biology mixed with 21st century technology. So this shark is likely uh, connected to a small transmitter, likely attached to the base of his dorsal fin. And every time that shark surfaces and that uh, transmitter makes contact with the air out of water, it sends a signal, it sends a message to a satellite. Or perhaps after a certain period of time, it pops off electronically disengages from the shark. And when it does, it, it, it delivers reams of data, how deep they go, the water temperature, and of course, where they are in the world, in this case, off the coast of uh, New, Jer New Jersey, New York. So, you know, when you talk about tracking these sharks, the fact that we're seeing, it feels like at least, Jeff, that we're seeing more and more sharks in places we haven't, you know, maybe a decade ago. What do you think is, is, is the reason behind that? Well, it's a sign of great conservation. You know, we've discussed this, that we live in a time today where it's dire for the planet. We lose a, a species of life every 20 minutes in the last 40 years, we've lost 66% of all our planet's nature. Yet, because where we live, the prey species like harbor seals and gray seals are increasing because these are now protected species, these great white sharks, their populations are increasing. The waters in some areas, people may find hard to believe, but are healthier now. So a, a healthy, more robust ecosystem, better buffet means more diners at the aquatic diner a better buffet but i gotta say if you're swimming in these waters and you know that there could potentially be a shark there you know that there's a shark at your local beach it can be really frightening i mean what should beachgoers be aware of when when they're in some of the and when they're in the ocean well whatever you do don't swim with a ham hock hanging around the end of your neck <laughs> but, uh, but seriously though here's what i want people to take comfort if you can find comfort in this so remember the next time you are swimming off the shores of Long Island or in the bays of New Jersey or here where I live in New England in Cape Cod, uh, don't ever forget you're never more than 100 yards away from a shark. So that may be uncomforting to know, but the comfortable part is to know that we share an ecosystem with these waters, with these sharks. And if we follow the rules, not swimming at night, not when these animals are clustered together during breeding times, avoiding dusk, uh, turbulent water scenarios, it is incredibly unlikely that you'll ever be attacked by a shark. You have a better chance of both being struck by lightning and winning the lottery within the same day as being attacked by one of these sharks. But the truth is, as their populations increase and as we enjoy our summers in the water, it is likely, although remotely, that these negative encounters will increase. But we must remember, we're sharing the ecosystem with them. It belongs as much to them as it does to us. You're absolutely right. I've just seen Jaws one too many times, Jeff. So the fear and paranoia exists every time I uh, go to the waters, particularly around Cape Cod. I do want to ask you, do you think we'll be seeing more great whites swimming around areas that they haven't frequented along the Atlantic coast? But you know, you just made a great point about uh, Jaws, which was one of my favorite books and movies growing up as a kid. and. The movie Jaws changed people's connection to sharks and to the waters. 
And Peter Benchley, who wrote that book, says it was his biggest regret mm. that he got that message out there. And in fact, he spent the rest of his life trying to change public opinion on sharks. But the truth is, shark populations of great whites in this small little cluster, in this little uh, postage stamp of our planet are increasing. But overall, the most important message is, is every year we kill about 100 million sharks. And around the world, shark species are declining at a disastrous rate. Remember, sharks have been on our Earth, tested by time for over 400 million years. And in the next two decades, we're likely to wipe out 60% of all our shark species on wow. the planet. And a staggering statistic. Jeff Korn, we are so grateful that you could break this all down and give us a little more insight into the great whites. My pleasure. Thank you, Jeff.